Hello and welcome to my channel. You know, growing up as a kid watching Star Trek, one of my favorite episodes was the one where uh, Captain Kirk went toe to toe with the Romulan commander. Uh, I think it was an episode called Balance of Terror. And the Romulan commander was played by an actor named Mark Leonard who went on to play Spock's dad in a couple other episodes. So, you know, I figured my collection wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be complete without a Romulan commander. Now, I know that we have uh, a Romulan commander that Migo has put out for us, but I really wanted that Mark Leonard looking Romulan commander. And I was lucky enough to find one online at uh, one of my favorite sources, uh, Reliving the Past Again. You know, I've gotten several uh, heads from them, you know, uh, Klingon heads, uh, my core, uh, of course, and also some Tellarites. And, and um, they really do a, a good job representing the, the images of those iconic characters. Well, here's my, my head, my uh, resin printed head. Looks great, looks just like Mark Leonard. I'm gonna go ahead and get started painting them right now. Um, I, I did apply a, uh, a new, I guess, base coat, this stuff right here. Because you know what, the, the head comes um, in like a, a dull grayish color. So I found this uh, flesh tone online on eBay. I'll put a link down below. But um, I'm gonna try it out. First time I've ever used it, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, this new paint really drinks up the uh, the paint that I'm applying. These eyes are teeny though. I think I got it. Yeah, I'm gonna let those dry and then I'm gonna try to, to get the pupil. But you can see this, uh, this resin print looks great. He's gonna be a, a good addition to my Romulan collection. I've got the white painted in. I'm gonna try this again, but this time I'm not gonna talk, okay? Because that might be part of my problem. So let me see if I can get the... Okay, let me try it again. I might have to open up my new brushes and get a better brush. This one looks like it might be on its last legs. But you know, I just, I have this pack that I haven't opened yet, so it might be time to open it up. Man, this eyes is giving me so much trouble. Hmm, it's getting there. Yay! <laughs> Got it. Looks good. All right, so I'm going to go on to the next step. Be right back. Now I'm painting the eyebrows. I'm using a color. It's called Dryad Bark, and it's a Citadel color. It, it applies really well. You know, um, I'm thinking I'm going to move over to Citadel paints for everything I do. Just because they, um, they flow really well and they can make my painting a lot easier. This guy's kind of difficult to paint. What do you think of those eyebrows? They're the way they're sculpted on the model, so I guess that's going to be the best I can do. All right, now let me start on the, the hair. I'm going to grab a bigger brush. Let's see. Oh, this one's a big one. This um, dryad bark is kind of like a chestnut color. And again, you know, start at the scalp and then move your way back. That'll provide the best results for your for your hairline. You know, this, um, this sculpt could also double as Spock's father. You know, that Mark Leonard played Spock's father as well on the series. So, you know, you could have double duty with this guy. I guess uh, finding an outfit for him might be tough. I got the Klingon, I mean, I'm sorry, I got the Romulan outfit set up for this guy. I think I'm also going to add a wash to this.
You can see how that kind of like gives you um, a natural looking hairline. You know, when you, when you start at the scalp and you move back, you, get, it's, you can almost see like those individual hairs, right? So that's why I do that. Let me see, I might have missed something here. Yeah, this this is a hard figure to paint. Um, I think just because there's the details are subtle and you know you want them to be somewhat realistic, you know. The Klingons are a lot easier because they have a lot of um, areas where if you do make a mistake, you know, it's not that big a deal. You can cover it up with the wash, but I don't know. I'm gonna try a wash on this, but this is the first time I've painted this type of head. You know, uh, I guess a Caucasian looking head that. I had to prime myself because you know usually you get the ones from um, from Dr. Migo that have the uh, the Caucasian print. You know they're actually printed in that in that flesh tone, so it's um, they're a lot easier to paint. You know, like my um, my tailor. I'm gonna have to get a little brush for the inside of that one because it's pretty small. I don't want to get any on the ear. Can you see that? Oh yeah, that's that's a perfect brush for that. Let me see if I can get these little hairs up here too. Yeah, I might save the bigger brush for the um, for the big parts. Yeah, I'll just use a big brush for the big parts. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So I've got I've got his hair done. You know, but you can see his face is a little pale. So I'm gonna try a um, a wash. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and paint his lips. Now his lips are very thin, so I'm using a very thin brush, and I'm just tracing them out the way they've been established on the um, on the print. Hmm, this color may be a little dark. I don't know, we'll see how it looks once I finish the, uh, the shade. pretty good. Let me make sure I didn't miss any spots. Yeah, I think once I get the shade on there, it's going to be uh, the wash. It's going to look good. All right, let me go to the next step. I had originally thought that I was going to use this uh, Reichland Fleshlight shade for my, um, for my shading effects, but it's just too dark. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make my own. Now, to make it, I'm going to use my Cadian Flesh Tone. Right? I'm going to take a a good dab of that and let me put it into one of these little holders. That's probably more than I need. And then I'm going to add a little water. To kind of thin it out. Mm, might be a little too much water. Because I'm also going to add a little bit of soap, a couple drops of soap. And this should give me a nice little wash. Oops. Looks like my wife had already added water to this soap, so it might be a little, might be a little runny. Let me try this out and see how that's going to work. Oh yeah, that looks good. Yeah, this will 
uh, darken the paint color a little bit because this paint color, the, the spray paint was a little little light. So this is, uh, this is adding that depth and uh, a little darker color as well. But you can see, even though it's the same color as the lips, it's really, you know, because the lips are full strength, uh, they're not really lost in this wash. Oh yeah, that's that's looking good. I wish I would have remembered the proportions of that. It looks very watery, so I'll just, in the future, I'll just make sure it's a, a little bit more watery than I'm used to. Yeah, that's looking good. You can see it's going into the recesses where I need it. And it's really adding that depth to the figure as well. So yeah, this this is a you know making your washes sometimes is a is is a good thing. Got to make sure I don't get it in the eyes. Oh yeah, that's really really adding that uh, the depth and the uh, darker color that I need for this flesh. It was that little voice inside of me saying everything's going to be all right <laughs> again. Oh yeah, I'm going to let that dry. I might need a second coat, but it's looking pretty good. Let me get it behind the ears. Did I miss that? You know, if you get it in the hair, it's not a big deal because you can always add more, more paint. I am going to get underneath his chin to divide the jawline. Make sure I got behind this ear. Hmm. You know what? I might need a little bit darker shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some more of my base color, and I'm going to drop it off over here and add some of what I have already created to make a little bit darker and that's a good thing about these shades you know if it's not exactly what you want you can always go back and you can always you know work with it to get the color that you want yeah it's a little bit better Oops, sorry. Brush is hitting the camera. Okay, let me just smooth it out. I want it to go into the recesses, but I don't want to have these splotchy marks, so I'm going to have to go back with my brush and I'm going to have to clean up those areas. Let me dry it off now. So. I might have put too much. I was going crazy with it. As you can see, that's really done a lot to uh, define the face and to give it the shadow and um, the depth that you need.
Yeah, it's looking good. So that's how you create a wash. Now the commercial ones are always better, right? But if you don't have the color that you need, a little soapy water, your base color, and you should be good to go. Yeah, it looks like this brush has had it. Trying to smooth it out. Yeah, that looks pretty natural. I'm gonna let that dry and see if I need another coat to it. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'll be back in a moment. I am gonna use my um, Agrax Earth Shade. I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna use this wash on his head. Just to kind of um, give his head some some texture and maybe define the the area between the scalp and the uh, and the hairline a little bit more readily. Yeah, be careful if you're if you're applying it close to the scalp because you know what it, it'll it'll bleed into it, you know. And you definitely don't want that because this this stuff is very very runny. That's yeah, looking, looking pretty good. You know what? Maybe a gloss would have been a good idea. Um, too late now. I'll just stick with this for right now. Let's see how it looks. I guess I can always go back and do a gloss. You can see the areas where I had that um, that homemade wash. I would intrude it on the hairline. So this is kind of bringing down that color as well. We've got a lot on this side. May have to repaint it. Yeah, I might have to repaint that. You know, and then once you're done, you always go back and you check it for touch up. There might be some areas that you missed or some areas that got messed up. Like that one right there, I'm gonna have to repaint. But I'm gonna check it out with, the, I'm gonna finish my wash job just to see how it looks. And then I'll go back and touch up. I think he's almost done. Besides the touch up. What do you think? Yeah, I like what that homemade wash did. Remember, you know, to make your, your homemade washes, it's just um, a little bit of soapy water. Uh, of course, water down your, your base paint and just kind of I guess play it by ear you know but um you know the Roman commander's not an easy one to paint I'm just warning you now if you get involved in this you know gosh who knows what it'll look like you know um I I'm not 100% pleased with it I mean he looks okay right but I don't do well with um with flesh tones that aren't established already like trying to blend them and stuff it, it's difficult so you know what um if you're just starting out, I would probably recommend the Gorn or um, the Neptunian was a really easy one, and that looks great. You know, I would I would start with those. You know, Klingons aren't so bad because you use that um, that brown boots to establish your flesh tone, so that's why those guys are a lot easier. So um, Romulans might be a little bit tough. You know, Romulan commander, 
I think I, this is more of an advanced type of uh, job. I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm an advanced type of painter or whatever, but I'm just saying it's probably more of an advanced type of job. I wouldn't start with the Romulan commander. Well, there he is. Uh, once again, my matte clear enamel saves the day. You look how it provided a nice, consistent finish to the face. Looks a lot better, a lot more lifelike that way. Uh, I was worried it looked a little splotchy, you know, after I did the, the wash. I mean, it still kind of looks a little splotchy, but that uh, matte clear coat really brought it down. And you'll notice I also painted some little white dots in his eyes. Uh, I do that just to kind of like give a little more life to the, to the figure, but it's hard to do them on camera because I have to get really, really close. Um, like I say, my, you guys may not believe this, but my eyesight's not that great, you know, and um, I have to put on my, my, uh, my magnifiers so that I can see some of this stuff sometimes. Well, actually, pretty much all the time. But anyway, let me go ahead and, and get him in with some other figures so you can see how he looks um, uh, in comparison to some of the other Romulans, some other figures that I have. There's my Romulan commander with the with the rest of my Romulans. You know, looks just like Mark Leonard, that uh, the, the printed sculpt. Just, I mean, knocks it out of the park, right? The resemblance is just uncanny. Uh, paint job, you know, yeah, I have a couple of splotches there, but you know what? I think it was unavoidable. I had to, to make my own uh, wash, and so I guess things like that happen. But as you can see, the uh, the matte uh, enamel really did kind of like eliminate a lot of those splotchiness, the splotchiness that I had. So um, we got something that looks a little more consistent and a little bit more representative of, uh, of the actual figure. But uh, really pleased with it. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this as much as I enjoyed creating it. Uh, yeah, there were some bumps in the road, but you know, whenever you paint your, your, your sculpts, your Migos, I think there will be some bumps in the road, but I hope that doesn't discourage you from, from trying it and, and getting out there and painting. Now, some of you guys who have some experience with painting, I don't think that this will be any problem for you, you know, but if you're just starting out, I would probably avoid the Romulan commander until you get a little bit more experience under your belt. But, uh, until then, you know, um, just keep plugging away, keep trying, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.